All the castings and parts sit on a piece of cardboard and the vacuum packed onto there. And it's a very good way of keeping all the parts together. But there comes a time when you have to take the parts out of the packaging. So here we go, starting with the base. Be very careful when handling the castings at this stage because there are sharp pieces of metal on some of the edges. This is very standard on most castings, but that doesn't mean you want to start off the building process by cutting your fingers, so do be careful. And just like filing, once you get used to how this thing works, it's very useful, because obviously it imparts a ground finish to the work, but you have to be very careful. This is dicing with death. If I do this wrong, I could remove a chunk from the casting. And so to recap, I've managed to make this part by just using a file, a belt sander and a drilling machine. And before I start the cleanup process, which is commonly known as fettling, I'm having a look at the flywheel to see how good it is. And as a rough casting, this is pretty good. It sits in the four-jaw chuck very evenly. I'm taking it out of the four-jaw chuck because it needs to go in the vise in the outer part of the workshop for a bit of serious filing. Carbide tipped lathe tools are much more fragile than a high speed steel lathe tool. There are pros and cons of using either of these type of tools. The good thing about carbide tip tools is they are generally very sharp until you chip them and they cut very well. High speed steel tools are also very sharp but they will soon blunt on cast iron if you take too hard and too fast a cut. I always enjoy machining parts like this because they're not critical. The actual fit of them is fairly critical, but the shape of them isn't, so you can have a bit of artistic license. However, I am following the drawing's dimensions. I've just used the micrometer to check the size of the centre part of the flywheel. And the centre part of this pulley needs to be exactly the same diameter as the centre part of the flywheel. So I'm checking it frequently with a micrometer, so I get them both the same. The first thing to do, as always, is clean up the casting. And this one had quite a big lump on the end of it, which I took off with the bandsaw, and now I'm using the one inch belt sander just to clean up the part. It's quite a tidy casting, not a lot of work to do. This crank web casting, may look like a very simple component to machine, and indeed it is, but it's not that easy to get it 100% accurate. The main point is, the hole down the centre that takes the crankshaft has to be perfectly in line with the hole that will take the crank pin. First of all, I face across the end as before, and I use a centre drill for reasons I've already explained, then I mark the piece of silver steel with the lathe tool, so I know where I'm going to cut to, and then I take quite a good cut. This is what's known as a roughing cut, getting rid of a lot of the surplus material in one go. And even though my boxwood lathe is quite old, it still cuts very well without chattering, and as you've just seen with the dial test indicator, the chuck is quite accurate. This clip shows me using my old bandsaw to remove some of the moulding sprue from one of the top caps. This part of the process is known as fettling, cleaning up the castings. These castings are going to be machined in the lathe, but it's still a good idea to get rid of some of the excess metal. A quick word on the type of tools to use for boring cylinders. You can of course use high speed steel, but high speed steel will need sharpening frequently because it does blunt. Cast iron is a very strange metal. It's got a high carbon content and it's quite slippery but impurities in the casting process tend to blunt the tool. Here I'm using the usual carbide tip tools, which are a lot better, and replaceable tips just make them very easy to use. Here's the story so far. These are all the parts that I've made. The flywheel, the crankshaft, the crank web, the bed, the pedestal and the pulley. And now it's time to make a very important part of the engine, the pair of main bearings. Here are some main bearing castings. The bottom pair are the ones that Stuart Models sent me because the first pair that were in the kit were riddled with blowholes. The top pair of castings are some that I've had for quite a few years and these were originally from a Stuart Victoria casting set. This episode is all about machining the crankshaft bearings 
which are currently sat in four pieces on the bench, but not for long. I'm about to solder the parts together using this stuff, it's called Friar Lux paint. And all it is is ground up solder mixed in with some flux, and you just brush it on, put the parts together, heat the parts to melt the solder, and once they've cooled, everything's soldered together. All of the machining operations for the bearings were carried out using a four jaw chuck. This four jaw chuck to be exact, but now it's time to remove it, being very careful not to drop it on the bed. And after giving the end of the spindle a good clean with a cloth, it's time to fit the three jaw chuck back in place. When removing and refitting chucks onto a lathe, whether it be a threaded chuck like this one, or the cam lock type of chuck, you need to make sure that the mating surfaces are very clean. And also, generally speaking, I would lubricate the thread. I'm going to make the cylinder for this engine in a very unorthodox manner. I've already made one, I showed it in an earlier episode, but for that I was using stock footage of the way I would normally machine a cylinder, so I thought this is an ideal opportunity to show an alternative way of doing it. I would recommend that proper engineers switch off now. What's happening at the moment is no big deal, I'm making a mandrel in the lathe, I'm turning down the end of this piece of steel bar so it fits in my tailstock chuck. This entire piece of bar is the same diameter, more or less, as the core that's in the middle of the cylinder. The quality of the casting seems okay. A bit of fettling here and there is required, but that's normal. I'll speed up the video for this next bit, otherwise it's going to get very slow and boring. All I'm doing is cleaning up the casting with a file. I'm using a large coarse file for the inside area, but when it gets to the outer areas, I'm using a needle file. This part is quite tricky to clean up. This is a stuffing box for the gland. That's why I'm using such a fine file, because I need to clean it up without changing its shape. On screen at the moment, you see the main cylinder with the steam chest sat on top of it. And now, here's the cover that's going to go on top of the steam chest. It's looking a bit rough at the moment. I've cleaned up the edges, and once again, I've only just got enough material to work with. So now I can put the casting into the machine vise. Here, as usual, I'm using my nylon faced hammer to tap the steam chest cover into position on the packings. I'm starting off by running this video in real time, and as you can see, it's a very slow process. This first cut is an exploratory cut to see how flat the piece of cast iron is. All I'm really doing in this first cut is getting through the shale layer. When machining cast iron, particularly with high speed steel tools as opposed to carbide tip tools, if you go too fast, you will burn out and blunt the tool very quickly. Not the most interesting of videos I know, but it's all part of the process. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.